Hello there, YouTubers. I am Gustin Astacio from Healing X Outreach. This is an adver advertisement for our show, Healing X Outreach, at that is uh, Block Talk Radio, www.blocktalkradio.com, backslash Healing X Outreach Radio. And uh, it's Christmas. This is December 25th. It's my favorite time of the year. And I just want to dispel a few Christmas myths. We've talked about it a little bit on the show with uh, J.R. Um, Holding. Yeah, that was around Thanksgiving. And this Saturday, we're going to cover 100 years of false teachings of the Watchtower, going from 1914 to 2014. And that'll be this Saturday. And so look forward to that. Nine o'clock every Saturday, we're usually on. So just go to blogtalkradio.com backslash Healing X Outreach. And the subject I want to talk about on YouTube is Christmas. And last night I went to a candlelight Christmas Eve service. My favorite thing in the whole year and my favorite time of worship, my favorite service of the whole year. And, and there are a lot of reasons why it's my favorite service. It's rich, especially if you go to a candlelight service, a nice liturgical church. The liturgy is rich in the incarnation of Christ. It's rich in detailing that he is truly God incarnate, that God became a zygote, that God became an embryo. He became a little baby in a manger. The very purpose of the Christmas story is to emphasize Christ's advent, the season of advent, his coming, the first time he came as a babe in a manger, a suffering servant, someone clothed in human flesh to eventually die of the same wood. That is wood in a manger and wood on a cross. And so some of you say, well, keep Christ in Christmas. Don't put an X there. Well, actually, the very purpose of Merry Christmas with an X is to remind us that Jesus was born to die on a Roman cross. The X is the representation of a Roman cross. It's the Chiro system, Chiro cross that Constantine carried in battle. That is Emperor Constantine and was one of many forms of execution by the Romans. They had crosses uh, shaped like a triangle, crosses shaped like an X. And so that's why we use X mess to remind us of Jesus' purpose and passion to come to die for people on splint of wood and that is why he came. Now, the things I want to discuss is to dispel some of the myths. And that that's one of those common Christian evangelical mistakes is the Xmas. But I want to talk about something that the cults and a lot of pseudo-Christians use. December 25th. How did we get December 25th? It's often said that this is the date of Sol Invictus, Saturnalia, uh, the pagan gods of the Mithric religion. And if you do any research, and I have a paper called uh, Christmas, is Christmas pagan? Or uh, is this the beginnings of the Christian liturgical calendar? We have to remember that Christians were originally Jews. They were all Jews in the time of the New Testament. Paul was a Jew, Peter was a Jew, all the apostles were Jews, and they were just beginning to evangelize the Gentiles. And so they still worshiped in a very Jewish setting. For those of you who know what Jews do, they have a annual calendar of feast days. They have the, the Feast of Tabernacles, you have Yom Kippur, you have Hanukkah, you have all of these dates around the year where Jews chose certain seasons to worship their God, Yahweh. So Christians, as a Jewish movement, they didn't want to lose entirely those Jewish roots. But they had this New Testament gospel, the life of Jesus. How are we to honor the life of Jesus from birth to death? And we already had the celebration of his death that is at Passover and uh, Christians now honor that not around the time of Passover but 
they honor that in various times whenever they have communion. They pass the bread and the wine in honor of the breaking of his body, which is the bread represents his flesh. And that bread, of course, would be torn or ripped or sometimes in wafers. Uh, it will have uh, markings and piercings, all representations of Jesus' death. That is, his body was broken. And also the wine, the cup, uh, was a representation of the blood that he shed. So we had now already the institution of a reminder of his death. And then we had to further remind us of that death, the Easter or Paschal celebration, the reminder of his resurrection. And so we reminded ourselves of his death whenever we came to the table as a community of people. And we also reminded of his resurrection. That is that he was raised and so we shall be like him. And now Christmas was starting to come into play. Bishop Hippolytus in his commentary on Daniel dated at 202, I think 202, 203 AD, which is early third century, talks about the Feast of Nativity, the date when they believed that Jesus was born. Well, we often have many dates we think that Jesus was born, but why were Christians now starting to choose December 25th as a date of his birth? And that is what's very important. That's what comes to, uh, is the center of my paper that I did on Facebook. If you haven't friended me up, friend me up on Facebook, or even just check in my notes section. You don't have to. Augustin Astacio is my name, A-G-U-S-T-I-N-A-S-T-A-C-I-O. Check my notes. It's public. Public. I, I've put all of my notes for the public. So even if you're not my friend, you can read my notes. And December 25th, had everything to do with what Christians believed was the date of his death. For many of us as evangelicals, we're widely ignorant of how Christians celebrate Christ in other parts of the world. Christians celebrate his death on March 25th, some, of course, around Easter. Some Christians celebrated his death on April 6th. And yet other Christians celebrate his death on April 7th. Well, what does that have to do with Christmas? Well, you just count March 25th and nine months later. And you have his birth. Well, what the, still, why would his death have anything to do with his birth? Well, Jews then had a belief that the day a prophet died was also the day that he was conceived or born. And... Around this time of year, that is March 25th, April 6th, and April 7th, certain Christians in certain areas, they have the feast or annunciation of Mary. Well, what is the annunciation of Mary? If, if you go to a Catholic church or an Orthodox church or a Coptic church, the annunciation of Mary had everything to do with the day that the angel Gabriel came to Mary and told her that she was pregnant, that she was conceived by the Holy Spirit of the Lord, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. And so if March 25th is the day that is believed that Mary was conceived, that is that she had this visitation from Gabriel, whether it's true or not, it was on that date, this is what Christians believed, according to Bishop Hippolytus, according to Clement of Alexandria, these early church Christians, the Donatists, uh, all of these early documents and early recordings of Christians that are extra biblical recordings, but the earliest recordings of trying to find the date of Jesus' birth and how we came to the feast of the nativity we know as Christmas. And so March 25th, that is Western Christians in the empire of Rome, believe March 25th was the day that Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel. Nine months later, from a date of conception, we get December 25th. January 6th, which is now celebrated as Epiphany, which is also the day of Jesus' baptism, 
and yet some Christians also celebrate his birth on January 6th, goes back to April 6th. That is, Eastern Christians in the Empire of Rome believe that Jesus received that visitation, that is, Mary received that visitation on April 6th from the angel Gabriel to tell her that she was pregnant. And then African Christians, Coptics, Coptic Orthodox Christians, Ethiopian Coptics to this day, and I work in a building filled with Ethiopians who celebrate Christmas on January 7th. And so what we have is three days for Jesus' death and conception, March 25th, April 6th, April 7th, by three different regional groups of Christians. And then we have three dates where they celebrate the birth or the feast of the nativity, the birth of Jesus Christ. And the common message amongst all three Christians is that God became human flesh, the incarnation. He came to be born in weakness. And this first coming, he is born in weakness. And why do we do Christmas? We are reminded that God came to become as us so that we could one day serve with him in heaven. You see behind me a Christmas tree. It's a beautiful tree, probably the best tree we've ever gotten. We got it from the firehouse. It's a Fraser fir. It's a beautiful Christmas tree uh, cut and it is made of wood. And the tree represents the wood that eventually Jesus would die upon. He died upon a tree, scripture says. And it is of wood in a manger, a tree cut down that he was born of. We decorate it with lights to honor Jesus as the light of the world. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, describes Jesus as light who have come into darkness, a darkened world. He is our light. The red represents the blood that he had shed. And the gold that we would decor a tree, the streets of gold that we will inherit in heaven because of his shed blood. And so I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And you all, I hope you have received a new understanding of the Christmas celebration. A celebration that was already well underway in the late second century, early third century, had nothing to do with Mithric religions. In fact, Aurelian moved the Mithric religion, the Sol Invictus celebration from August to December to compete against the Christians. And what happened? Well, we can see who won and who lost that celebration. The Mithric religion was a dying religion. And Christians, just like Paul, who used an unknown god, a statue, a pagan statue, to syncretize, that is to share the gospel through those common elements so that people can come to know the true S-O-N of God. And that's what we do. We can share through others those small truths in pagan religions because they're always lined with small truths. And we can share the fullness of the gospel in those small truths so that they can come to know the true God, Jesus Christ. So may you all have a blessed Christmas, whether you celebrate December 25th, January 6th for my Orthodox Greeks and Turkish Christians, and January 7th for my Ethiopian Coptics. God bless you all.